So I'm going to go quick here so we can get into the real stuff. Um, so Ben, just bring those up when you're done. All right, here we go. Um, the reason I teach this, the negative ion, or sorry, the negative uh, electrode and the positive electrode match the charge of ions. Anions are negative. Cat ions are positive. Why is that important? This cell will become full of positive ions. All the cations will migrate to the cation. All the negative charges will accumulate over here. Guess when a battery stops working? When what? When they've all migrated? Yep, let's say it another way. So that's kind of what she said. All the negatives are here and all the positives are here. What do you think that creates? No. What? Equilibrium. Yes, equilibrium. That's when batteries stop. That's when they die. When delta G, so let's think about, so I'm trying to, trying to do a good job here of relating K, delta G, and now this, right? So you understand the concept. When delta G is negative, K is bigger than one, and we are favoring the forward. That means batteries are working and producing electricity. If delta G is positive and K is less than one, that means we're going the wrong way. Batteries, voltaic cells won't work. What's kind of in between is a zero, right? So if you have a cell that is working, this is true. Your delta G is negative, K is bigger than one, and this is working in the forward direction, meaning zinc is giving copper plus two electrons. But at the same time, these ions are going back and forth through the salt bridge. So essentially, when zinc loses electrons, what's happening is it's creating Zn plus two ions. So this bar is going to deteriorate over time. So zinc is losing electrons and literally turning into zinc ions. So the bar is being uh, deteriorated, fall apart. The ions go through the salt bridge so they can all hang out over here with their buddies. All the pluses go over there. The exact opposite is happening over here. So now the electrons traveling through. This bar is gonna have electricity running through it. Think of it that way. So the bar will have like a negative charge. I know that's a little confusing because I told you the sign is positive. Stay with me. So the electrons are going in here. What does that mean? It means the uh, positive ions in here are attracted to it. The copper plus two ions from the, the solution gain electrons and jump onto the bar. Fat cat is my analogy. The cathode gets fat. It gains mass. This is why. You're taking ions from the solution, combining them with electrons, reduction, and forming more copper metal. So as this battery works, this negative G becomes a smaller negative number until all the positives are over here, all the negatives are over here, the bar is so deteriorated it can't produce electrons anymore. All those positive charges, the Cu plus two, have gained all the electrons they're gonna gain. They're on the bar now. So this bar is significantly heavier, larger in mass. This bar is essentially not there anymore. All the negatives are over here, all the positives are over here, and it stops. So as that happens, it sort of balances out where delta G becomes zero, K is equal to one, and essentially we're doing this. No one's really winning, right? We're balanced, so the forward isn't winning. The reverse also isn't winning. They're kind of balanced, but as a result, we have a zero for delta G, and the K is, is one, meaning this thing's gonna, it's dead. The, the battery's not working anymore. The reason the negative ions come over here is to balance the positive ions. So the positives are going over here, the negatives are going over here, again, because of the uh, um, anions are negative, anodes negative, cations are positive, cathodes positive, 
Um, and really, the reason those ions migrate the way they do is because of that electron flow. And because naturally, it wants to reach equilibrium. That, that's like a, a good thing for a lot of reactions. So eventually, when you get all your negatives and all your positives and the bars are doing their thing, the electrons are all kind of run out, you don't have any more the source of electrons, this is true. So I just kind of went through everything, uh, region stuff, and this is the new stuff. Now you need to really understand what's going on here. So you need to not, you know, memorize, understand both where the negative ions are going. Anions go to anode, cations go to cathode. I know I didn't write a lot of notes here, um, but if you know the balanced equation, you can write your half reactions and you can remember certain parts, you can kind of figure out the rest. Um, and we're gonna get into practice problems, obviously. Now before I, I move on, questions? So, before we get into the harder stuff. Anox, red cat, Leo Gerd, fat cat. Um, the anode loses mass, gotta remember that. Anode, anions. Cato cathode, cations. Salt bridge allows ions to flow. Once the charges are balanced out, that's gonna be equilibrium, the cell stops. That's kind of like the summary of all the important things in this one over here. Hopefully, most of that makes some sense. So, what about a rechargeable battery? Well, when you give it electricity, it forces this essentially to become the oxidizing, the uh, oxidation half reaction uh, cell in, redu in, in, in re reduction. It reverses it. If you give it a rechargeable battery electrons, right, give it electricity, it kind of does this exact same thing in reverse. Why, why do you think you can only recharge it so many times? This doesn't last forever. What do you think happens to the anode? Well, yeah, it gets depleted, and then you can actually recharge it. But what do you think happens every time you do that? What kind? It just like a little bit. Yeah, so essentially think of it like part of it dies permanently every single time. Like eventually you won't be able to recharge. It's just it's completely depleted. You, you can't you can't uh, can't take all those ions and remake the metal. It just doesn't work that way. Um, it's not perfect. All right, so. Here we go. Uh, you need your books now. Grab your books. Go to page um, 819, please. Thanks, man. Yeah, there should be, yeah. Just, okay. Good, 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 good. All right, let's go to... Uh, page 819 and I think you're gonna see a picture of this yep. yeah okay. All right. so write this down and then we're also gonna write I want to write this down here Uh, put a star next to this. This this will uh, save your life or take it away on a question. You need to memorize that. By the end today, it'll make more sense. Actually, it'll make more sense very soon here. Um, so um, the E cell is this E right here. So I should label that. Um, e is basically the volts that are passing through that cell. Like how many volts is that cell producing? Okay. These uh, numbers come from a list called the standard reduction potentials. So that's something we're going to get into. And we'll use this, this example in the book here to kind of explain this first. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not, because I have, again, I have notes within my notes. So I want to make sure I'm not missing something here. Uh, Okay, 
So write this down here. Cell potentials. I just want to make sure I'm using the right terminology because I can explain things um, sometimes very simply, but that's not going to help you on a test. They're going to use the real words here. So cell potential. What is that? The volts. And again, it'll make more sense when we get into the problem here. Um, is the driving force. I'm just going to write it exactly as I have it, which is not typical for me, but this is important. Cell potential is the driving force in a uh, spontaneous cell and um, how a cell reaches equilibrium. The greater, so I'll explain the concept and then we'll get into the actual numbers and hopefully it'll make sense. But here's the concept and then we'll use numbers to prove it. The greater the cell potential, the farther or further, further from equilibrium the cell is, which is a good thing. If you have a voltaic cell or a battery, you want it as far from equilibrium as possible because once it reaches equilibrium, it stops. That's kind of what this, both of these are going to help us understand. So the bigger this negative number, and if you look at the equation, it should make sense to you, the bigger this E cell, right? Imagine the number's one versus a million. The bigger this cell, E cell here, the larger that G is going to be. And it's negative because that says negative. F is a constant, Faraday's constant. Is it 96,500, something like that? 485. Yeah, I want to say like in physics or in the book, like they use 96,500, but what? It's, it's a small detail. What's M? Moles. Moles of what? Of What's being transferred here? Electrons, right? So we kind of know how to get that. We'll talk about that. So the more electrons that are transferred, the higher the voltage. That should make sense. So the bigger these numbers, the larger the negative G, delta G, and that is a good thing. That's the further away, the longer it's going to take to reach equilibrium. Okay? These numbers, again, are given to us. We're going to get to that in a minute. The cell potential, again, kind of a confusing term. All it really means is what is the difference in the potential between your anode and cathode that drives the release of electrons? It still might be confusing. I get that. We're going to obviously get to some examples here. Um, let's see here. When a cell, so add this here. When a cell equals, or sorry, when a cell reaches equilibrium, I need to keep making stars here. This is all important. Uh, when a cell reaches equilibrium, Q equals what? Say it again. K, which is K. K. Q equals K. So again, I'm bringing stuff from the past. It's relevant now as well to understand the concept. So I, if K is really big, right, that means we're favoring forward. If K is really small, we're going in reverse. And if K is equal to one, we're at equilibrium. So they're both occurring at the same time. Remember, if Q um, is bigger than K, which way do we shift? Product. He says products, do we all agree? This is why it's really important to understand this. And then we'll get into some numbers. They're both found the same way. If you have a reaction, reacting, reactants yield products, right? So if Q is bigger than K, what does that mean here? Initially, we have more products or more reactants? 
more products. So initially, we have a lot of products, not a lot of reactants. At equilibrium, what this is saying, we have more reactants, less products. Right? Mm -hmm. Everybody with me? Yeah. Okay, so who's been right? <laughs> All right, so if Q is less than K, if Q is point 0.1, and we know K is 1, how is it going to get from a point 0.1 to 1? More products. That's what he said. So do we agree? Yeah. Ben, you good? Oh, crap. <laughs> I did say that. Sorry. Did I say that and then wrote it wrong, or am I, I'm confusing myself? You said myself. that you wrote it right and then flipped it. Then I wrote it wrong, okay. Yeah. Let's back up. Okay, if Q is bigger than K, Q is 1, K is 0 0.1, the only way a 1 can turn into 0.1 is if we shift left. So this would shift towards reactants. Sorry, man. If K is bigger than Q, then we're going to shift towards the products. So that you, this needs to start making more sense or else this is going to get really confusing. So if Q is less than K, right? If greater than Q. Oh if, Q, if Q is bigger than K, if that's a 1, let's say, you know, let's make a number 10 and 5. Let's get away from the 1 and the point 0.1. Okay? If Q is 10, how does it become a 5? How does that same value, these are the same thing, this is just initial and equilibrium. How does a 10 become a 5? Well, then we're going to have to shift towards the reactants because we need to decrease this number. So that's important to remember. So initially, right, initially, when we have these cells set up, we don't want this scenario. Right. Because we don't want to go in reverse. Right. We, want, we want to go forward. We want to produce electricity. Okay. Yeah. All right. Another thing I need to, to write down here. Standard cells have a molarity, have uh, a molar concentration so in those half cells of one, one is standard. If you start changing that concentration, it starts changing things. We're gonna get into that. Again, I'm trying to give you all the concepts, even though it might be confusing now, and then we'll, we'll use the numbers to learn. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's just get into an example here. All right, so again, maybe you wanna label this, this is the voltage that's produced. I want to make sure you understand that. The voltage on a battery, 9 volt, 12 volt, whatever. Okay, the voltage is due to the difference in the anode and cathode and their uh, potentials, meaning their ability to uh, lose or gain electrons. Think of it that way. Uh, and that creates a voltage. Um, all right, here we go. So let's go to all right, so you're gonna, you might have to flip back and forth. I don't know, but go to page 823. 823 has the reduction potentials. So let's calculate the E cell for the cell we just drew. And assume the, the uh, molarity in those two beakers is one, right? So we have one molar uh, zinc sulfate, one molar copper sulfate, and then you have the zinc bar, copper bar. We're gonna hook that up. That voltmeter is gonna read a voltage that we can calculate given the numbers on page 823. We just need to remember it's the cathode minus the anode. All right, so let's calculate this for the cell we just, we just drew. So E would equal, here's how we do it. Well, you go to this and uh, you find the two half reactions that we know are going on. So zinc zero is, um, zinc metal is losing electrons, producing zinc plus two, and then the copper plus two is gaining electrons, becoming copper zero, copper solid. So we gotta find those on here. I found the zinc, and I found the copper. All right, so we're gonna write these numbers down. All right, so um, let's write them here and here. So which one is the cathode, the zinc or the copper? Copper. So you go, again, these numbers would have to be provided to you. What is the voltage on the copper uh, half reaction? Copper plus two, not copper plus one, copper plus two. 0.34? Yeah, so it's right in the, basically right in the middle. 
it says Cu plus two plus two electrons yield Cu solid. That's positive 0 0.34 minus the anode would be the zinc. And what's that number? 0.76. So if you do 0.34 minus a minus 0.76, you're basically just adding them, right? Yeah. So what do we get? Positive something. 1.1, right? Yeah. Positive 1.1 volts. Okay. Where are we? What are you talking about? Okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, you mean the way it's written in the book? Yeah. yeah. Good point. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. Good. Uh, what's the title of this chart? Standard reduction potential. What's reduction mean? Gaining electrons, right? Yeah. yeah. So, that's just the way these things are written, right? So, I want to make it clear, and I was going to use this number to explain, if this is our E cell for what we just drew, Will the delta G be negative? Yes. Why? Because Plug in all the numbers. You know what? What would delta G be? You don't have to write it down. Just throw it in your calculator. What's N? Good. 2. What's F? The 90. 96,500. E is 1.1. So go ahead. Someone just type it in and tell me what you get. Again, you don't have to write it down. We're going to get into that. And then we're going to we'll do another one. Negative what? Two. 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 Negative two one two. Two six seven. Two six seven. That's it. That's what you got. Negative. Yeah. That that's an enormous number, right? Yeah. Okay. Why is that? Why is it going to be enormous? Because that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what is the unit on F again? Coulombs per mole. Coulombs per mole. Good. And so Faraday's constant is Coulombs per mole. Capital C is Coulombs. You guys remember that from physics? Okay. Um, a volt is a joule per coulomb. So I'm just I'm I'm kind of working through this with you guys because I haven't done this in a couple years because it's not like I do this you know in my spare time. Um, but uh, this is moles, right? Moles times a coulomb per mole times volts, which is joules per coulomb. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, right? So you're going to get joules. That should be big. I just wanted to make sure because that number is enormous. Whenever you get a big number for any of those delta G, H, or S, it's probably joules, so that's going to be joules. Okay? Good. All right. What if this number was negative? Be a positive number. This would be positive. If this is a negative number, that means the difference between the cathode and the anode is not the direction we want. When you have a, a positive E cell, that's a good thing. You want your anode, and I want you to write this down. You want your anode to be uh, have a negative voltage for the reduction potential. So the, here's a better way to say it. The more negative your anode is, and the more positive your cathode is, the, better this, the, the bigger the difference in the cell potential. So you want your anode to be, on this chart, further down. Like lithium is the best anode. Go to the top, fluorine would be the best cathode. You want them to be as far away as possible because that's as far away from equilibrium as, as you can get. So this is the relationship we want.
the way they write it in the book, again, is because it's standard reduction potentials. And I'm glad Nicole brought that up because some kids in the past, if I don't spell this out or make it very clear, they, they want to flip it. So they want to flip the reaction. And then they say, well, if I flip it, I probably change the sign. No. So basically, um, this is this the signs they give you, just use it the way it is. It doesn't matter that the reaction is flipped and it's not exactly how we need it to be. It's just showing that when zinc gains those electrons, that's a negative change in the voltage. And then when the copper gains the electrons, that's a positive. That, that's all that number is telling us. This is set up the way it's supposed to for the E cell. That's the easiest way I can say it, is just take the numbers they give you and plug it, plug it in, cathode minus anode. Don't overthink that too much. It's just showing what happens if they're both gaining electrons, which is not, you know, that's not what's happening. The zinc is losing. But um, that's how we get this number. So um, again, the more negative your anode, that's, that's good. The more positive the cathode, that's good. And another thing I want you to write down, a positive E cell will always give you a spontaneous reaction. I want you to write that down. A positive E cell here will always give you a negative delta G because of the, the math. It's negative NFE, so if this is a positive number, of course that's going to be negative. So these are all little things that can help you on a, on a test question if you can remember them. If you can remember this, let's put it this way, you have to remember this. Right? Otherwise you can't figure this out. Um, if you remember that being positive is thermodynamically favorable, that, that's going to help. Because it can help you answer uh, question, lots of questions. All right? And it should make sense to you, the bigger, the, the, um, the bigger this number, then the bigger that negative will be. Okay. Good. Uh, if you look to the left of uh, that chart on page 822, it just basically does exactly what we just did there. Right in the middle it says 1.10 volts, and then underneath it says we can calculate delta G. Positive E means the redox will favor the formation of products, which is what we want, which would be a very large K. Right? So I'm connecting all of this. So the further away from equilibrium, the better. Question. All right, good. Uh, I'm going to give you another practice problem here. This time I do want you to write down the calculation for delta G, like put it in your notes. Um, if you look up on the top of um, 822, underneath the Cu plus 2 reaction, it says the cell diagram, PT solid, and then there's a line, H2, 1 ATM, line H plus, you can read it. Um, that is how you might see a cell written on a test. Instead of giving you an entire picture, they're gonna write it like that. So let me try and help you out here. So for the one we drew, it would look like this. Um, yeah. This, means you have two beakers with a salt bridge and a voltmeter. That's kind of the image of a salt bridge. This is the solution this is in, and this is the solution that is in. So there's your um, cathode, there's your anode. So I need to explain this because on a test, if you see this and I didn't explain it, you would have no shot. You'd be like, what, what is this gibberish, right? So this is just, instead of drawing a picture, this is what they would give you. Oh, I forgot one molar, sorry. One molar would be in there too. So they're giving you the concentration. Um, not making some sense at least, like that's just like a shorthand instead of drawing a whole picture. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna give you uh, one of these here, and I want you to calculate the E cell. I want you to calculate the, um, actually calculate the E cell, and then using the delta G equation, um, predict whether it's thermodynamically favorable or not. Okay, so I want you to calculate that, right? Justify using calculations how the test would say. Here we go. So calculate, here's the question. Calculate the E cell, and I'll just say delta G, um, for the following cell. So it would be um, AL solid, AL plus three A cubed, 
one molar. Um, AU plus three AQ, one molar. AU sub. So there we go. So I want you to calculate your E cell, calculate the delta G, and again, if it was a test, they might make you actually explain. Like explaining if this cell is thermodynamically favorable or not. Wait a second. Oh no, we're good. All right, but you guys lied to me. I knew it. Okay. What? I'll get back to that. Because when we were solving this earlier, we didn't have half the, the unit. The unit's always joules per mole, kilojoules per mole. And when I asked what was the unit on Faraday's constant, what did you guys tell me? Coulombs, Coulombs per mole. You said coulombs per mole, and I just ignored it. Yeah. I thought that was per mole. We all, you wrote you per mole. And you wrote per mole. Over M. Oh, well. oh, I did? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you still lied to me. Because you were like, you guys remember capital C means cool. Yeah, but then, all right. Anyways, we'll do it here. I just want to make sure you understand the units all cancel, so this is kilojoules or joules per mole. All right, do we have answers? No. Remember, they're going to have to give you the reduction potentials, right? So you have to use page 823 for this. They have to. There's no way you're going to come up with the E cell any other way. All right, we gotta we gotta get going here. I want to do one more thing before we get out here. Uh, what's the E cell? Three point one six Yeah. So again, if you um, you look at the reduction potentials here, um, it's always in terms of the ion gaining electrons. That's why if you look at the aluminum one, it's negative. What is it? Negative negative one point six six. 
the gold is positive 1.5. That's because aluminum doesn't want to gain electrons, right? Aluminum is more likely to be oxidized than, than um, gold. So why? Well, on this chart, it's further down. See, that used to be a nice little trick I could teach, like because this used this chart used to be in your equation reaction sheet, and I could say closer to the bottom, that's your anode, that's your oxidized, right? That that gets oxidized. You don't have that anymore, so they would have to give you the the reduction potentials for probably just these two, right? So if this was a problem, they would have to give them to you. That makes it maybe easier. I don't know, but. Um, the point is, the reason they're all written this way is again, because it's reduction, but the ones that are negative, it's uh, not a good thing. Okay, so lithium um, doesn't want to do that. It doesn't want to gain an electron. Lithium would rather lose it and become a stable uh, ion with a full valence shell, right? So I'm just, again, explaining why these might be written backwards because the oxidation, that's not happening, right? The ones on the bottom, they should be written the other way, but you're not gonna see it that way. Um, so I just really want to make sure you understand, just take the number they give you and just put it in the right order. Cathode minus anode. Don't get hung up on, oh, it's written wrong. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, so this is a uh, point positive plus 1.5 minus negative 1.66. We want a positive E cell because that'll give us a negative delta G. So this is again, uh, what do you guys say? 3.16. 3.16 times 96,500 or 485, whatever, times three. Why three? Because you have three moles of electrons going from aluminum to Au plus three, creating these ions. And the value for delta G, I actually didn't calculate it. What is it? Negative 914,677.677 seven, seven joules per mole. And again, let me go through this again, the units, because I screwed that up before. So I'll just do it right here. So if we have moles times, um, this is coulombs per mole, and then a volt is joule per coulomb. No, I did do that. Yes, you did. Yeah, you did. Because everything gets done, you don't have to joules. Yeah, but it's got to be joules per mole. Well, no, no, I'm doing something. I'm, I'm forgetting it. it. Honestly, at this point, it's not. It's kind of irrelevant. If, if you can solve your E cell, and you can solve, if you know how to do this problem, we're in a good place today. But I get weird about things, and I want to make sure that that's right. That the unit on it. Oh, because a coulomb is. Anyways, moving on. We're gonna move on for now. I'm not getting hung up on that right now. So uh, again, let's recap what we talked about. This would be a good working cell. It would produce 3.16 volts. Um, this is an enormous thermodynamically favorable number, right? Even if you put it in kilojoules, 914, pretty, pretty decent sized negative number. So this is a typical example of how you would use these two equations together and to prove whether it's thermodynamically favorable. All right, um, we have like two minutes. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna introduce this. We'll talk about it on Monday. What if I gave you uh, this problem and, it, and I gave you the, the reduction potentials, but I said solve for the equilibrium constant? Stay with me. Let's turn around. So what if I said this too? So we would do this, we would do this. Now what? Just learn. Right. Negative RT natural log of K. You still would use the 8.314. They would have to give you a temperature, standard probably 298. You could plug this in for delta G, right? But it would have to be, if it's joules, then you could use 8.314. If it's kilojoules, you'd have to convert that. And then you could solve for K. So you, you see how these can kind of connect multiple concepts here? Yeah. Should K be big or small? Big. Should be big, why? It's negative. Right, we're favoring our products, which is a good thing. 
So hopefully I did a decent job here connecting all the, the concepts here. We'll do more of this on Monday and then learn some new stuff. There's not a whole lot of new stuff left. That's good. Good thing.